hello everyone, I'm Flavien Collard, and I'm going to talk about a paper recently published uh, in Nature Communication, which is called Bryophytes are predicted to lag behind future climate change despite their hard dispersal capacities. A widely used method uh, allowing to compute the impact of climate change is called species distribution models. These models are based on the ecological niche concepts and enable to link species observation to their environment. However, the main assumption of these techniques is that species are at equilibrium with their environments, which means that when we want to project these niches into future scenario, we assume that species are not limited by their dispersal capacities, and so that all suitable areas uh, are fully colonized in the future. To reduce the, the incertitude, it is important to develop new framework accounting for this dispersal limitation. A, a framework called MICLIM was first developed to simulate the dispersal, the dispersal capacities into future. This tool works as an automaton when you can give probabilities of colonization and also apply some geographical barriers. It is easy to use as it requires require few parameters. However, the primary version of this uh, study, of this framework, uh, only use uh, probabilities of colonization that are the same among the whole studied area. But this is very problematic, especially when you study wind dispersal organism, uh, as they mainly rely on wind condition and um, canopy height, which differ specially. Therefore, it is important to include this spatial variation into account. For this uh, article, we focused on bryophytes, which represent good models to study climate change. They are good wind disperser. As an example, the smallest, uh, the smallest uh, seed diameter uh, in uh, angiosperm is present in the orchid family and measures uh, roughly 50 uh, micrometer which represent the biggest spore size in uh, bryophytes. In addition, bryophytes hold an, an exceptional importance in the control of global carbon fluxes uh, because of the huge amount stored, uh, of carbon stored in peat. And in particular, more carbon is stored in a sphagnum genus than in any other genus of plants. Bryophytes have also no roots and so they cannot pump out the water, the water directly from the soil, making them highly dependent on atmospheric precipitation. And in addition, bryophytes of temperate biomes exhibit lower temperature uh, optima than their angiosperm counterparts, which make them extremely sensitive to moderately warm temperature, and so highly sensitive to climate change. The objective of uh, this study was to implement a hybrid statistical approach that accounts for temporal and spatial variation of both climatic conditions and wind connectivity for wind dispersal organism. We used uh, this new implementation in order to determine to the extent to which highly efficient dispersals like bryophytes can mitigate the loss of suitable habitats through rapid colonization of newly suitable areas. So here is the workflow of the study. We first generated uh, correlative niche models. Then we computed dispersal canals, which were pixel specific. And then we combined these two types of data into an adapted version of MICLIM. So first of all, uh, we focused on four different biomes in Europe. And for each biomes, we study 10 species, which represent in total 40 bryophytes. To generate the correlative species distribution models, we selected five bioclimatic variables at one kilometer resolution. We generated the species uh, ecological niches and projected into present and every 10 years until 2050. And then we binarized this map, maps. In parallel, we generated dispersal kernels. To do so, we use two uh, parameters that, that were um, species related. The first one was the setting velocity, which is the speed that a particle goes down and was derived from spore diameter. And the other one was the resist height, which was related 
to the lifestyles of each species. The other two parameters were more uh, were specially structured, and it was the max wind speed and the canopy height, both at one kilometer resolution. We then combined this data into dispersal probability formula called uh, the world algorithm. And for each pixel of the one kilometer maps, we computed uh, this, we use this formula. Uh, we generated dispersal canals for uh, of every kilometer from one to 10. And after 10 kilometers, we decide that mosses cannot disperse uh, further. This is why we use four different values of long distance dispersal probability, which was derived from phylogenetic, uh, from previous phylogenetic studies. For the simulation part, we use uh, the binarized maps and the dispersal canals. We combine these two types uh, of data into MIGCLIM. Every year, MIGCLIM selects randomly inside the future stable area a number of pixels that is equal to the number of pixels of, the, of their current distribution, like this one. Then it computes the probability of colonization of all colonized pixels that are around 10 kilometers. And then it applies a random draw for each probability of colonization and also the long distance probability to see if pixels are colonized or not. After 10 years, MIGCLIM changes the future map uh, and the dispersal canals of, uh, to the new period of time. Then it removes all the, the occurrence that becomes unsuitable and continue the process until 2050. After 2050, we decided to keep MIGCLIM running in order to see how much time a species need to fully colonize all the pixels that are present in uh, 2050. As a result, I was first, first focused on uh, the correlative uh, SDM. And so if you look at this picture representing the number of species that lose or gain area in the future in 2050, we can see that the Arctic alpine species were the most impacted one, losing in average 42% and of their current area and only gaining 9%. In an opposite situation, the Mediterranean species were less impacted, gaining in average more than losing. And now what happens when we include the dispersal limitation into account? We can see that if we set the probability of long distance uh, dispersal to zero, 98% of the studied uh, species uh, failed to fully colonize new, the new suitable area in 2050, even after 500 years without any change. And if we set this probability to a value that is higher than what has been found in previous phylogenetic studies, we can see that only 25% succeed to fully colonize in 2050, and only 35 uh, species failed again. And in addition, if we look at this graph showing the ratio between extinction rate and colonization rate for the four studied biomes with two different value, values of probability of long distance, we can see that Arctic Alpine was again the most impacted one with an extension rate uh, really in median 40 to 50 times bigger than colonization rate. And uh, the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean uh, biome was again the less impacted with an extension rate uh, in median 30 times bigger than colonization. So this is a clear evidence of a substantial range contraction for all studied species. So in conclusion, uh, this study has shown the importance to incorporate dispersal into correlative species distribution models even in a fast uh, dispersal group such as bryophytes. And with this new implementation of MIKIM, we can say that bryoph we can say that bryophytes are not equipped to track the very fast rates of ongoing climate change for the course of the next decades. Thank you for your attention and uh, thank you to all my colleagues that helped me for this uh, study.